Hello Year 9, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a video to help you with this question here. So I'm on lesson 2 which is called Global Water Patterns and it is task 4. So it's this one here, there's quite a bit to write um, and we need to be very careful with the command words in the question. So it says here, describe and explain the pattern of global water withdrawal around the world. Use data from both graphs as evidence to support the patterns you identify. So that last bit of the question is referring to the describe part, because whenever we are describing graphs or apps to describe graphs, we need to make sure we're using figures from all the axes. So, for example, if you want to talk about this increase we can see here, well, it's an increase in water withdrawal, so we need to read off this axis. If we were talking about the line, we want to be reading off this one. And we could say that it has an increase. We've seen that it was, what's that, about 500 kilometers cubed per year in 1900 and that has increased all the way to about 4,000 kilometers cubed per year in 2010. So you can see that I'm using ax um, numbers from the axes there. If we're talking about population, do the same thing, but read the line from this one. Okay, and you can do similar things with this. Now the explain side of it is actually much easier because most of the information for you is on this slide here. So we know that the population is increasing. That's obviously going to lead to us using more water. One of the big reasons for that is we need food and agriculture and a lot of water. So we can see that here that the blue one is always the biggest section. Now, obviously, the industrial revolution is happening at the beginning here. So our industrial withdrawal is starting to increase and then it stabilizes once uh, deindustrialization things start happening and things slow down. Um, domestic water withdrawal. So that's water we use in the home. So if you think showering, cooking, uh, washing machines, dishwashers. As um, society advances, we start using more of that because there's more technology in the home that uses water, as well as people getting wealthier as well. So all of the kind of information is on there for you. When it comes to um, explaining this graph, obviously you need to talk about how lower income countries use less water, give some figures for that compared to higher income. One of the big reasons for that is this bit here, that in lower income countries, people don't have access to water, they don't have money um, to buy bottled water, the government don't have money to build infrastructure such as water pipes or dams to be able to get more water. So as a result, they're going to use a lot less. If you compare that to richer countries like our country, um, we'll think about things like water in the garden. You know, it's been really hot here up until this week. So have your parents been watering the garden? There's a good example that you can see in the home of, of water use in rich countries. We've got dishwashers, we've got washing machines. Those things are um, use a lot of water washing cars and that's stuff that's just not done in poorer countries because they don't have enough water to do it. So that helps explain why richer countries use more. You could also tie in the fact that rich countries eat more meat um, because meat actually uses a lot more water than um, growing vegetables, for example. So one kilogram of beef uses 15,000 litres of water. So richer countries generally eat more meat and that means there's more water in agriculture there as well. And now so many years are using a lot more as well, especially ones like um, Brazil and China and Mexico, because they're going through their industrial revolution. So their industrial water use is going to be increasing there, okay? as well as the fact they're getting richer. So their agriculture and their domestic will be increasing as well. I hope that helps. And good luck with the question and all the work you're doing at home at the minute.